Okay, so previous video we talked about finding the reference angle for 120 degrees and we got that by doing 180 minus 120 we got 60 degrees and that angle will be drawn here. So if I went all the way around to that angle that would be 120 degrees and my reference angle here is 60. As I mentioned before, the 60 degrees here corresponds to the 60 degrees here in the first quadrant. So it's basically taking the original angle that was drawn to here and it's making it into an angle that was in the first quadrant. So what we're getting into next is now we're going to be applying a trig function to the angle itself. So let's suppose it asks us to find cosine 120. It's asking us for, basically it's saying the x value at 120 degrees. So the x value, if I take these triangles and draw them down here, the distance from here to here is the same as the distance from here to here, except we notice that one's going positive and one's going negative. So here's a table of values we had before from, uh, that we talked about earlier in this section. If I look at, let's suppose that the angle was only 60 degrees and I want to find cosine 60. Okay, when I look at 60, I go over here to cosine and I get one half uh, as the answer. Okay, so that means that this value right here, this is one half from here to here. That would be one half. That's the x value on the unit circle. Now, this here, that distance is going to be exactly the same. From here to here is one half, here to here is one half. However, the x value in this case is going to be negative, and so then I would technically have a negative sign there. One half goes to here, and this is negative one half going that direction. So, that's what you can use reference angles for. Reference angles will allow you to use your table here. However, we have to make an adjustment for our signs. So what I'm going to show you next is a sign chart. This is going to tell you, depending on which quadrant you're in, it's going to tell you which is positive and which is negative. If you're in the first quadrant, your sine is positive, cosine is positive, and tangent is positive. So anytime an angle ends up in the first quadrant, we know everything is going to be positive. If you're in the second quadrant, your y value, which is your sine, that's positive, but your cosine is going to be negative, and your tangent, because your tangent is the same thing as the y value over the x value, or sine over cosine like we talked about previously, that's going to give you a negative as well. Down here, your sine is negative and your cosine, both of those are negative because the y value and x value down here would both be negative. However, your tangent is going to be positive because that's your sine value over the cosine. For here, your sine is going to be negative still, but your cosine is going to be positive and your tangent is going to be negative because it combines these both together. So this is a sine chart that we need. So if, if I want to look at cosine 120, I know that the reference angle is 60, so I can just grab cosine 60 off my table and make it one half. However, I need to make a sine adjustment depending on which quadrant that angle is in. If you're in the second quadrant, that tells us that your cosine is supposed to be negative. So we need to know this sine chart in order to know whether we make this a positive or a negative value depending on the quadrant that's in. Now, instead of memorizing this sign chart, here's something that you can use to memorize it. It's a mnemonic device here, so we're going to do all students take calculus. Maybe that statement's not necessarily true all the time. Not everybody takes calculus, but we're going to use this to uh, a way to, to look at this without memorizing the sign chart. It's a quick and easy way to tell uh, what's positive, what's negative. This sentence right here, all students take calculus, that refers to quadrants one, two, three, four, so each word represents each quadrant. The beginning letter of each, that's going to tell you which one is positive. Now the first statement says all. All of them are positive in the first quadrant. Students is the second quadrant. S stands for sign. Sign's the only one positive there in the second quadrant. In the third quadrant, the T, that represents tangent. Tangent's the only one positive in the third quadrant. And finally, the fourth quadrant, C, stands for, for, um, for cosine. So cosine's positive in your fourth quadrant. So all students take calculus. That's a way that you can re remember what's positive and what's negative. But it all comes off of this. So in future uh, problems I'm working out here on these videos, if I refer to a all students take calculus sign chart, this is the one that I'm referring to. We do have to use this 
when we go through the steps for finding the trig function at any angle. So that's what we're going to move on to next. We want to come up with a, some steps that we can follow to find the trig function, the trig value at any particular angle. It doesn't matter if it's between 0 and 90. We're looking at any angle going around the unit circle we should be able to find the exact value for if it ends up being uh, one of these types of values you can get off of here. So of course if I had a cosine of 121 or 122, I can't find the exact value of that because it doesn't translate back into a special angle that's on my table. It has to be one of these ones here. So that the type of uh, problems they're going to give you would have to eventually be a reference angle that takes you back to one of these here, a 30, 45, or 60. So now let's take a look at the steps and we'll do some examples. Okay, so here are the steps for finding the trig value at any particular angle. We have these three steps right here. The first step would be to find the reference angle. So I'm going to use this example here to highlight the different steps to show you how you would find the exact value of cosine 120. In a previous video we talked about that cosine 120, we found the reference angle by taking 180 minus 120. So if I'm following the steps here, that means that the first step would be my reference angle is going to be 60 degrees. I already found that. Step number two says apply the trig function to the reference angle. The trig function they're talking about here in step two is whatever one they give you in the original problem. So because they give you a cosine here, if we're doing this example, your cosine would be the trig function. So I'm going to apply the trig function to the reference angle. That's what it means. I'm taking cosine of 60 because 60 was my reference angle. Now cosine 60, I can get the value off of my table down here. So here's 60, I go over the cosine, that value is equal to 1 half. So now I have cosine 60 is equal to 1 half. Done with step number two. Number three is apply the appropriate sign. We're going to use the all students take calculus sign chart that I just gave bef right before we talked about these steps here. So refer back to that and also look in your notes. And also all students take calculus will tell you uh, what sign each of those trig functions are. Now we already determined previously that 120, that's in the second quadrant. So we have all students. So S represents the sign is going to be positive in the second quadrant, which means that everything else is going to be negative. So that means in this case, to get the, the, uh, the answer, if I want to find cosine 120, I would have to take this value I found in step number two and all I'm going to do is apply a negative sign to it because I know that cosine has to be negative in the second quadrant. And that completes your uh, three steps. So we're going to do some other examples. I'm going to go through the same three steps so you can follow uh, how you would do that. So we found the reference angle, 60 degrees, we found that already, 180 minus 120. We applied the trig function. The trig function is cosine. We applied that to the 60 degrees we got one half. So by doing reference angles, that's what allows us to use our table. And then finally we just make a sign adjustment and that's it. So now we have a way that we can find the exact value for any angle between 0 and 360. Now of course again it's got to give you ones that allow the reference angles to turn back into 30, 45, or 60. You don't have to have actually exact the values off the table. You don't need that in order to find a reference angle. You, you could actually have cosine 10 degrees or 17 degrees, you could have that on there. However, you're just not going to be able to get exact value. In that case, you can still go through this process, but you're just going to get an approximation. So if you want to get an exact value, they have to give you a reference angle that refers back to one of the ones in the table. But you're not limited to finding reference angles only to special angles. You can find reference angles for any angle. It doesn't matter what it is.